He did not believe in the tidings of great joy. He didn't believe that God so loved the world that he intended to damn most everybody. And now he has gone to his reward. And Charles Darwin, a child of nature, one who knew more about his mother than any other child she ever had. What is philosophy? It is to account for phenomena by which we are surrounded. That is, to find the hidden cord that unites everything. Charles Darwin threw more light upon the problem of human existence than all the priests who ever lived, from Melchizedek to the last exhorter. He would have traversed this globe on foot had it been possible to have found one new fact, or to have corrected one error that he had made. No nobler man has lived, no man who has studied with more reverence, and by reverence I mean simply one who lives and studies for the truth. No man who studied with more reverence than he. And yet, according to the orthodox religion, Charles Darwin is in hell. Consolation. So, if Christianity be true, Shakespeare, the greatest man who ever touched this planet, within whose brain were the fruits of all thought past, the seeds of all to be, Shakespeare, who was an intellectual ocean toward which all rivers ran, and from which now the isles and continents of thought received their dew and rain, that man who has added more to the intelligence of the world than any other who ever lived, that man whose creations will live as long as man has imagination, and who has given more happiness upon the stage and more instruction than has flown from all the pulpits of this earth, that man is in hell too. And Harriet Martineau, who did as much for English liberty as any man, brave and free, she is there. George Eliot, the greatest woman the English-speaking people ever produced. She is with the rest. And this is called Tidings of Great Joy. Who are in heaven? How could there be much of a heaven without the men I have mentioned? The great men who have endeavored to make the world grander. Such men as Voltaire, such men as Diderot, such men as the Encyclopedist, such men as Hume, such men as Bruno such men as Thomas Paine. If Christianity is true, that man who spent his life in breaking chains is now wearing the chains of God. That man who wished to break down the prison walls of tyranny is now in the prison of the most merciful Christ. It will not do. I can hardly express to you today my contempt for such a doctrine, and if it be true, I make my choice today, and I prefer hell. Who is in heaven? John Calvin? John Knox? Jonathan Edwards? Torquemada, the builders of dungeons, the men who have obstructed the march of the human race? These are the men who are in heaven. And who else? Those who never had brain enough to harbor a doubt. And they ask me, how can you be wicked enough to attack the Christian religion? Oh, but they say, God will never forgive you if you attack the orthodox religion. Now, when I read the history of this world, and when I think of the experience of my fellow men, when I think of the millions living in poverty, and when I know that in the very air we breathe and in the sunlight that visits our homes, there lurks an assassin ready to take our lives, and even when we believe we are in the fullness of health and joy, they are undermining us with their contagion. When I know that we are surrounded by all these evils, and when I think of what man has suffered, I do not wonder if God can forgive man. But I often ask myself, can man forgive God? <laughs>